Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's Al Baqir or Al Baqir or how? Al Baqir. Al Baqir. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Bless you. Wow. It's you ready? nice to have someone pronounce my name. Yeah. Of course. I'm like it's like you know you have to. Yeah. Al Bajir. Al Bajir. Al Bajir. Yeah. 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 Ready. I'm ready. Okay. Let's go. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and hello welcome to another episode of Buckle Up and man oh man um, I've been waiting for this for a while and um, it happened this incredible soul on my right is one of our heroes you are one of our heroes 100% you guys gonna know and, and figure this out for sure for yourself um, but she's an award-winning uh, journalist uh, her work has been featured on Channel 4 BBC Africa BBC Radio 4 CNN the Financial Times the Guardian and um, in 2016 she actually received the Thompson Foundation Foundation Annual Young Journalist Award for her in-depth reporting of the effects of the U.S. sanctions on Sudan. Overall, what attracted me personally as somebody who's into blogging and covering like hip hop is her style and her authenticity. And like I said, she's one of our heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to the one and only Yusra Al Bakr. Make some noise from Sudan. <laughs> You're too sweet. How you doing, fam? I'm good. Assalamu I'm happy alaykum, to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Bless you so much for your time. I know it's Thank at you. night. It's like 1026 in Dubai right now. And welcome to Buckle Up. I'm so excited. are you ready to buckle up? I'm ready. This is the time where you do this Safety move. Safety first. Yep. She'd been dying to buckle up, yeah, man. Yeah, you know? man. I'm not trying to die out here in these streets. <laughs> but I'm going to move this back because, do whatever you, know, you want. restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it to be restrictive. Yep. Yeah. Let's do um, it. Salam. Peace and love, fam. Always. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Yeah, you are one of you are one of our heroes. I am really excited to ask you about this, you know, obviously the, the journalism. What does it mean to you? How did you get into all of that as Yusra? Like how, what was it? Was it the fact that our stories are told yani, by yeah. us? Yeah. Uh, sorry, on, 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 on us, like, you know. Bah- none, on our behalf. Yeah. I think, I mean, for me, it's twofold. It's like, I come from a family of journalists. My Bless grandparents them. were journalists. My parents are journalists. My siblings are journalists yeah. in different capacities. Huge fan of all of them. And, um, but also it's about storytelling and yeah. it is about reclaiming the narrative. You yeah. know, when I graduated, I moved back to Sudan in 2015 and there had been no news coming out of Sudan since the Darfur conflict, mm. since the rigged elections. Mm. They weren't giving anyone visas, press visas. Just as we're doing this, can we put the mic up a little bit? If yeah, of course. Yeah, as we're doing this. Okay. Uh, so that was during that point. Th- At that point is, in 2015. Okay. So no one had heard anything of Sudan since the elections mm. that Bashir had in, mm. in 2015. And before that, it was Darfur. Every time I say to someone from Sudan, oh, Darfur. Yeah. And it's like, Darfur was such a horrendous conflict. And, I, and I'm happy, you know, thanks to my older sister, Nema, who was the first foreign journalist to go into the IDB camps in the early 2000s. So just a funny story here. <laughs> so I am just trying to YouTube and doing that. And I'm just, oh, I made the connection. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Nema. Yeah. And if she's watching she's this, I'm a OG, huge fan. OG, the OG. She is incredible hair sto- man. Okay. Um, yeah, so go on. All right. But I mean, it felt like there was one narrative, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I went back and I was shocked to go. I lived in Sudan for yeah. high school. So between I was Sudan and the UK. Between Sudan and the UK. So I moved back when I was nine and I went to high school. Shout out to Unity High School. Uh, my grandma went to that school as Bless. well. Okay. Um, British school in Khartoum. And yeah, I mean, I went back as, as, a, as a 23 year old and mm. I was just so just overwhelmed by the- What's the first thing you felt? The, the creativity, yes. like the artistry. You know, I went and I was just so surprised by how many amazing artists, how many amazing photographers, yes. you know, filmmakers. And so for me initially, it was about sort of tricking people into wanting to learn about Sudanese culture. So the first pieces that I did for CNN.com and they later on The Guardian were about the artistic community, but I sort of... That was the first piece you did, it was the, art. No, the first piece, I, the first, first piece first, I first piece. Uh, Nuba Wrestling. Um, Nuba Wrestling. Wow. So um, basically for CNN.com I did a piece about the new displaced Nuba population yes. who were escaping yeah. bombing yeah. by the government in the Nuba mountains. But some of them had gone to train in Tokyo for wow. the 2020 Olympics. Wow. And Nuba Wrestling is like an ancient tradition that the Nuba people have. And it was just me trying to trick people through sports at that time into learning about the Nuba and their struggle. And that later evolved into doing, you know, music pieces. The next piece was about a Sufi musician, world whistling champion, Asim Al-Tayyib, who was, you know. Asim Al-Tayyib, yeah. Asim Al-Tayyib, you know, he's just amazing. What? Yeah, so that was the second piece I did. No, but the fact that someone is like you is covering this for big publications or, you know, networks like this. I did it for free initially. Wow. So the first 
for to the Nuba resting piece. And the That's why she's thing. one of our heroes. Done. I'm not a hero. Three minutes and I'm, the interview. I'm, one of our heroes. I'm not a hero. You are. I'm just someone who's in love with my country and my culture. What, why, what, does, Sudan, what does Sudan mean to you? Because look, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I have no idea why I love Sudan. I always say I'm half yeah. Sudanese. My heart is, I don't know everything about Sudan. But for you as, as, as somebody, what does Sudan mean to you and everything that Sudan has been going through? Sudan is, is it's not just like a word. Sudan is a smell, it's a sound, it's a taste, it's a feeling. And it's like, you know, my whole life, my parents were super patriotic. When they moved to the UK, they refused to seek asylum, even though my dad was political opposition and was in exile. Bless he them. refused to seek asylum. He refused to forfeit his citizenship. And I literally got my British citizenship last month. What? Yeah, so I covered I covered Sudan as a Sudanese citizen. Yes. And wow. and it was only after the trouble that I faced that I decided wow. to apply. So when I got that passport, it was crazy because it was like, you know, I'm way more Sudanese than I am British, but I've lived so like more of my life in yeah. the UK. And it was like finally my identity is like yeah. real, you know? Well, what do you think of that term, the third culture kid? Like are you I fully buy it. Okay. Because I think that at the same like being from your home country and living as well somewhere else, yeah. you create your own culture, a hybrid culture, you right. know what I mean? And I think that third culture kids, we always relate to each other. Mm. And that's the international community now. Right. And that's the community that is tiny. You True. know, everyone knows everyone, everyone's working with everyone. Yeah. And I think that we, we connect via vibes. Yeah, via like because we're, we have also that sense of displacement. Mm. It allows you to, to try and create your own culture, your own understanding of what the world is, Fine. you know? Um, but I, I mean, I studied culture at university. I studied social anthropology. Wow. So even in that sense, I, I thought it was real from back then. When you won the award and they said your name, like young journalist, was it like in what was the exact title? Young journalist of the year. Yeah. Back then in tw yeah, 2016. 2016 was it? Yeah. What What was the first thing? Like what? what take us through the emotion of it. I mean, I was How shocked. How long were you been? I mean, you know, documenting at that point. So at that point, I'd been in Sudan for a year, and the mm. award it wasn't just U.S. sanctioned on Sudan; it was also for my culture pieces as mm. well. Um, I did this piece for the Guardian on a Nuba beauty queen. Um, this pageant that was basically you couldn't bleach your skin to be involved. You had ah. to have natural hair. You had to speak your local Nubia wow. Nuba dialect. And these are things, by the way, that are not covered on a regular basis. I mean, I, like, the feeling that I had was a sense of, like, this isn't for me, you know? And um, when, I, when I sort of gave the speech, I remember just saying, like, you know, this is for the local journalist who's constantly treated like the middleman between ah. the story and the, and the audience. Yeah. We can tell our own stories. Yes. We don't need someone to speak on our behalf. As somebody who's been in the in the office, do you think when when we say somebody's telling our story on our behalf, that's a fact? Fact. 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 You've seen it in front of you. Yeah, you like <laughs> I, I've had situations where I have had people who've never been to Sudan try and explain Sudan. You've to seen me. it. You've heard it. Yeah, hundred percent. They call them, but you know they have a name for them: parachute what? reporters. Parachute reporters. They they fly in and they leave. You know, and at the end of the day, I'm I don't think that. People can't share stories if they're not from a place. No. I don't. I don't agree with that. 100. But I think that at the end of the day, like people constantly say, you know, we're the voice for the voiceless. Yes. And you're the <laughs> voice. There's no voice for the voiceless. People. Everyone has a voice. Mm. All you do is amplify. You're amplifying the voices. You know. I'm That's not why speaking. She's a writer, man. This woman. Wow. I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone. I'm simply Fuck. giving them. A, a, platform, uh, a platform, lending them a yes. platform. Well, Aslan, a platform is not mine yeah. to give. I mean, yeah. But you're sharing a platform with people. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm Sudanese, right? But I still can't speak on behalf of every Sudanese person because I've had a very unique life. I've lived Experience. in different places. So I can't speak on behalf of every Sudanese person. I can't even speak on behalf of every Sudanese woman. True. So for someone who's, you know, a Brit or an American to think they can speak on behalf of people in Africa for me is is absurd <laughs> but I think that what what they can do is is share their platform and and allow for the nuance of that culture to come through through the people's voices and there are amazing journalists who are British who are American who do just that mm. what we what I think where the problem is is when you speak for us and, and Muslim women especially oh my big time 
Yeah. Like, it's like we don't have agency. Do you even have a choice in your hijab? And they're surprised to hear that many Muslim women wake up every day and put on their hijab gladly, you know, <laughs> gladly. Yeah. Look, you're talking to, again, I'm from Saudi Arabia, one of the most conservative countries in the world. And again, I've, I've heard people say Saudi women are oppressed. And if you go to Saudi, you're going to go like, see, there's a lot of Saudi sisters. That are, there are some certain things that I don't agree with. But there's also a lot of amazing, incredible art and talent in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Especially with, you know, um, you know, our sisters out there. Yeah. Um, when it comes to hip hop, fam, I know you're a fan ah, of hip hop. I love hip hop because I'm the youngest. <laughs> so my siblings, okay. you know, when I was a kid, like, you know, it's a black star. To oh. see black star. Oh, you, you just know. saw black star at so the XB. Yo, I, my brother was dying. My older brother. Oh, he's 17 him. years older than me. What's his name? Gelly. What's up, Gelly? What's up, Gelly? <laughs> but I've been listening to hip hop since I was like, literally when I was learning to speak. You what? know? Okay. Yeah. Well, like, you like the old school hip hop? I like, I like or... you know, I have to say, I love like there's it's very rare for me to find a genre that i don't like okay. like to find songs within it but old school hip-hop a hundred percent sugar okay. hill gang Yee! de la soul gang star you know, you know like, yeah. okay yeah okay. maybe that's a bit too old for me guys <laughs> 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 you're doing too much guru okay dj premier and dj premier i know okay, okay, yeah, yeah, i know yeah. um damn de la soul de la soul okay. tribe called quest tribe called quest oh, q-tip oh we're on know? the same page yeah, yeah. so okay. yeah i mean i i well, why hip-hop I think hip hop, I think the African American struggle is one that it's very difficult for us to say we understand. If you have a home country and you know where your roots are, you cannot say that you understand what it means to be African American because their struggle is, is, is far deeper than any of us can fathom. But what African American di African Americans did is they turned their struggle into culture, into culture that resonated globally, that made people want to be African American. 100%. And and what that did, it made being black cool. Yeah. You know, and it didn't matter at that point if you're African American or if you were literally, you know, from Sudan or from, you know, Cameroon or yeah. from Nigeria. You looked at African Americans with admiration, mm -hmm. and and they did that despite everything that was stacked up against them, True. despite the system. Yeah. That's where I think hip hop unites everyone you know and that's where we all feel like wow like they they, they flip the script you yes know? yeah no 100 percent. i mean um again you know when i interviewed cool herc who's the father of this culture and he's like where are you calling me from and i said saudi arabia he's like wow hip-hop reached out far yeah and yeah. i'm like yeah there's hip-hop everywhere yeah and you're right you know and uh, um how how is i mean do you follow uh, sudanese hip-hop Yes. Okay. Who, who do you like? I'm so proud of my Sudanese brothers and sisters. Who for do you what like? Name drop. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, uh -uh. Flipter. Hey, Flipter. Oh, Flipter. Hello, <laughs> hey. Allah. Flipter. Yeah. You met Flipter or no? Yeah, I okay. was. I was there when Flipter recorded his color show. What? Oh, yes, you were there. Yeah, I was of there. Course. Okay. And he just killed it. He killed he it. He did kill it. He killed like it. Like the last two verses, I was. Oh my teaming. god! Like, I was like, and you know what was crazy is that the team there are amazing, mm. but the team, yeah, I mean, they're not Arabic speakers, yeah. and I still German, felt them. Or, or it's a mix. Swedish, it's a mix yeah, yeah, between you know different yeah. different uh, nationalities. But you felt they're, they, they're authentic they, about telling your sto oh story. Oh my god! Yeah. That color is. Can I just talk about that color yeah, scenario? Yeah, of course, please. I because, spoke about it for but go Yeah, ahead. because uh, firstly, it was so authentic what yeah. they were trying to do. And it wasn't like, oh, this Sudan thing, let's just get on it, you know? Like, no. Right the wave. It was no, really. No, it yeah. was really, yani, for their first sort of social, yes. uh, you know, project. Coverage or project. Yeah. yeah. They, they did it and they did it with their heart and their soul. And sure. it wasn't just about like, you know, how many people we can reach or how many clicks. It really was like about real awareness. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even the fact that they wanted context, they wanted background for it. Mm. And yeah, bringing me to explain yes, things. Yes, yes. It just highlights it, the fact that they really 100%. wanted to teach people. Because I think it was one of the very few that actually that had talk in it. Yeah. Like it wasn't, you weren't not performing or, Yeah, you know? just explaining. Yeah. So that people weren't listening blindly like they had the information. So that was amazing. That, yeah, Flipter yeah. killed it. Flipter. Uh, also, I mean, they're 80 proof. Woo! 80 proof is bringing a new proof. level of no. collective <laughs> hip hop the yeah. circle, yeah. aka Keys, the yeah. real G Saleh, you Allah. know, all of them okay, are doing it. I'm about it. to show you something then, Please. like crazy. Okay, no, continue, continue, because um, I'm not about to, about to drop a bomb. Yeah, the real G Saleh. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who else. What about uh, Samani? Are you a fan? So, Samani, 
Samani is my little brother. Like, okay. Samani is my little brother. But I discovered Samani when I first moved to Sudan. Nice. And when I was first covering culture, so I reached out him to reached out to him in 2015. Nice. And it was before he dropped briefcase, but yes. he dropped him in Zaman. Mm -hmm. Samani's a prodigy. Like he's a prodigy. He's he's literally he is a genius. He, uh, uh, you know, like he, he I, I, he's a genius, okay. and you know the way that his style has developed and the, his his versatility. But when he was remixing those, yani samples yeah. of of of, of uh, Haqiba, Old, yeah. Haqiba, which yeah. is a was a traditional form of like very patriotic songs from the sixties and the seventies. What an incredible! That's I think the word prodigy. The, yeah, he's a prodigy, yeah. and and. And his brother, Too Dope. My God. Let's not forget yeah. Too Dope. Also, my I'm man. I'm about to make you hear something yeah. that crazy. Was my anyway, man okay. is amazing. Mahdi Ali Mahdi, my man. Mm. He went to school with me. What? Yeah. yeah. We're family friends. Our what? parents are really good friends. And I, I literally, I'm so proud of these guys. Rotation. Like, rotation is, <laughs> oh. When Rotation came out back in the day, I was like, The weekend who? What? Who's the weekend? Moment, who, who the weekend? Well, so, so it's amazing that you're 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 also passionate about the art and the and the culture of it. It's not only politics and discovering because you're reporting on Sudan. By the way, has been you have so much courage, fam. It's incredible. Your heart is is so. It shows in your reporting the way you're talking about. It. I'm not just giving you this, but I know I it get shows so embarrassed. In it's incredible. I really because appreciate you can it. tell that really this this person knows what they're talking about. Yeah. And you're covering the Thank exact, you. exact thing. So I really salute you for it. Um, culture, but, yeah, but culture, cu like, it's my, it's my first love. Like at the end of the day, I believe that culture is what connects us all. Yeah. It's consciousness, right? It's the spirit of consciousness. True. And I think that, you know, you can talk and talk and talk about politics, but how do you make people feel mm. the struggle? How do you make people feel the, the, the hope? At the end of the day, when we look at what, how the Sudanese story unraveled over the last year, that was through the creative community, you know. That was through yeah. the artists, the photographers, the, the filmmakers. The artists, the filmmakers. And, and, and so, honestly, yeah. I mean, when you saw photos that went viral, uh, that wasn't me. That wasn't, you know, Nima. That yeah. wasn't the journalists. Those yeah. were the people on the ground who, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, who were working to, to capture what was happening. But people think that this just happened. Like this community has been working towards this for years. They've been working towards this moment where they can share their perspective and their story and their struggle for years. So when you're seeing amazing photographers and filmmakers and rappers, they've been they've been working on their craft for so long while the creative community has been under attack. True. So you're not seeing a, a spontaneous thing. You're seeing the work of, of, of years of dedication and, and, and struggle. What's the most challenging thing you've faced? like something that you really like when you were able to overcome it or maybe something that you're still going through what is something that challenging that you know in my life yeah i think the last year has been very challenging but i think it's been the most rewarding year of my life yani, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Wow. it's been extremely transformative for me because it was firstly yani, it it was it was very difficult to see the things that were happening and it was very difficult to see my people get treated the way that they were treated and for a massacre to happen yeah. up the road from my parents house you yeah. know where they're living my mom found a bullet shell in in the garden um oh, and it's and i was there i'd been there for two months every yeah. day and had left two days before that 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 moment where that happened was the most grief that I've ever experienced in my life. And I can say that now because it's it's been six months yeah. and, and I have clarity. What I did though was I poured that into my work and I just sort of went on autopilot and worked and worked and worked. And I remember that when it was sort of done, I was I was I was quite battered. Like I was just like like yeah. I took everything with me and I just and and Spam. the last few months alhamdulillah i've just been sort of like healing and rebuilding and i mm. i feel like the I, person that i am now yeah. is is so much more awake and and understanding of what humanity is the, this, than the person before this feeling that you're feeling is it recent now that clarity feeling yeah like recent. it's literally like the last two months i've just felt like because you can't wow. unsee it yeah. you know but I, but I, you have to put it in perspective I, I mean, what we saw was the best of humanity and the worst of humanity at the same time at the same time and and it gave me so much hope but it also was so yani, challenging to see such cruelty 
you know, played out on the streets of my hometown, my hometown that I lived in for 10 years of my life, like not someone dipping in and out, you know. So it was extremely challenging, but alhamdulillah, I think that, you know, uh, it, it could have been worse. You said, what does the women of Sudan mean to you? Obviously with that, you know, that the, the sister, woman, the, woman the, of the, 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 the symbol, you know, what is that? When, when you saw that trendy, because it got over the place, right? I think that that was, again, that image was the culmination of the, you know, months of women on the front line yes, yes. fighting, leading the chance, leading the charge. Had that like even at the sit-in, you know, women were organizing, they were serving the food for Ramadan, like they were helping people. They were, or, yani, women were at the forefront of the organizational aspect, but also on the streets and in the houses, mothers encouraging their kids to go out. The woman of Sudan means strength, but also softness you know love you know it's like we're, we're we're strong but that doesn't mean we're hard you know we can be kind and loving and compassionate and caring but don't mess with us don't mess with us don't mess with us yeah and that's you know i grew up yeah. with with a mother extremely strong you know when my dad was in exile and he was moving between saudi between jeddah right. and, and cairo and the uae my mom was in the uk with us being the mom and the dad and she's a matriarch you know and Allah, Allah khalli lay my dad God as well, an amazing them. man. He's, 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 you know, served it, the country his whole career. It, it, speaking about parents, how did they feel when you were covering? Like, I mean, you, you are all in that kind of, you know, mashallah alaykum. God bless you all and God protects you all. How do they feel? At one point, you're serving your country. You're making some, but at the end of the day, you're the, the daughters. Ba the baby. The baby. Okay. Oh, the on, baby. You know? My parents were amazing. And this is why, like, when people are, like, show their appreciation for me, I say wajib because it's like, I, it was my duty because I was in a position of privilege, you man, know? Man. I had access. I had perspective. But I also had such an encouraging support system. My parents, the day that I got attacked on New Year's Eve by the security forces, my parents sat with me at breakfast. And my mom said to me, she was like, as your mother, I don't want you to go. But as a journalist, ya I know Allah. you have to go. Ya Allah. And ya my dad said, this is like just wow. Yeah, she's amazing. And my dad said, she to told me, you that. Yeah, she said it to me for the tour, like literally at breakfast. Let's say just for the sake of conversation, your mom told you, you can't go. You're, I'm not allowing you to go. What, what would you reply? I'd be just, like, Mama, I'm going to my friend's house. <laughs> no, okay. Now we go. But my dad also yeah. said something else to me. He was like, your safety isn't about you. It's about getting the story out. Ya Allah, I love you, Dad. My dad's yeah, he's he, a hardcore he journalist. That. Yeah, he said to me, your safety. He said it's about getting the story out. Oh uh, yeah, he's like, it's not about you. Cause he yani, had to for him to show me, I'm not saying stay safe for you because you're my baby, you're my <laughs> youngest. Yeah, I'm saying stay safe powerful. for the efficiency of your coverage, ya you know. Allah. And yeah, I, I, and my you know, my my brother produced everything from London, you know. Uh, while he was with his kids, then he came back after Bashir stepped down and produced on the ground for me, for Nima and the Sky News team. Yeah, yeah. Like, and my sister Sophia, who's a doctor, was like my personal therapist. Oh, so it was it was an incredible it's support a, a, system. A whole family hero family. Like. But but uh, but it was it, and my friends, you know, I was mm. so blessed to to not do this did, alone. Did, did you feel? down sometimes when you're covering this and you had to like let it out with somebody like how did, because you're human at the end. yeah no it was it was tough it was tough but the days that i didn't go into work and do yeah. it were the hardest you know mm. that's the thing the days that i you needed to be on the ground I, you know and when i wasn't at work i was on social media tweeting the whole Mashallah. time i i felt like it, it's not that i felt like um i felt like i couldn't stop I couldn't, especially when the internet blackout happened. Yes. But again, that's not just me. Has that's yeah. like the whole diaspora the whole, was feeling yes. like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone was on overdrive trying to deliver the message, trying to make sure people heard. Yeah. So it was I, a communal effort. True. I I know a friend of mine who's Sudanese who's not into politics, and in the beginning he didn't really want it. And then when that happened, he felt he was he was calling me crying. Just I, I want to do something. I just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, like and 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 it's a it's a big deal. Um. I want, you're gonna be the first one to hear this and okay. this is hopefully in the next two three weeks when this video comes I'm out excited. this is already out mm. okay but i really want you to hear this i'll tell you a project it's a project called revolt cypher okay i want you just to hear it and i want to hear your reaction okay it has eight rappers from sudan i wanted okay. to do this for sudan okay okay you're the first one to hear it i'm excited okay? that I want exclusive you to tell me drop it's exactly very exclusive so you know I'm a Mao? Shafata. I'm a Mao, he's on it? Mr. Mawalaka. Yeah man, hear 
All right, eight rappers. Start turn it with. up, turn it up, turn it up. Let me give you the Z. Actually, he go to play with the fool in the ass. Uh, so get the ass. That means I'm one of the greats. That means I'm one of the greats. That means I'm one of the greats. Hey, that shit ain't up for debate. People show love like it's law in the state. Fuck with us wrong and you made a mistake. Jeez. I used to go every summer. Cousins pile up in that extra. Used to go through 20 lapses from all the weddings and parties in Lexus. Niggas is talking about smoking me while I you niggas is making me chuckle. The shorty's been bugging me all in my DM. I told him I need a conductor. Tell the community, usually for my opportunity. Some of this new to you, none of it new to me. Ready to blow like I'm ready to hit you with it. If it ain't unity, none of it cool. I've been a feeling get back in the booth. Shout out to Boss and Big Shout out to Proof. Shout out to Hustle and Boss and Proof. I got the juice all up. Ain't no sleep when it's war time. Ain't no debate until 4 9. Some of the greatest of all time. We going out like the Butcher Khalifa. Someone should put this beat in the museum. Pack up my flow, put it back in the freezer. How about the whip while I scream underneath? See ya. Two phone, real as shit. I got sauce, real as shit. Kingdom Kush, I am king. I rhyme my lyrics on relics, bitch. Listen. Yeah. Real as shit, feel as shit. It makes me a menace. When it's in a sentence, then it's finished. Then I end up spitting it in your face. The social media jokes, you flow, I overflow. To joke, that mean I overdose. My mind is on a roller coaster. Face appearing all the posters. Tongue like a gun, don't need a holster. Family's like the Costa Nostra. The one with the most bill who likes to chill, but likes to chill. I'm making moves, you staying still. My back roots for you, my county. Jit from Tani Tani. I hope you fit Kalam and Yamaani. I hope you fit Hekam Funus Arani. To dope, I rep the Ayes old Sudani. Asli Asi Hassi in Nimedic Zamani. Even though Kuluma Aleha Fani Kalami Kuluma Alein and Minuma Haidu Tani. Wow. What exactly is we talking about? Oh, what? I'll shout out Amir. All the men to the parliament, steady partying in till they double drought. Brain Jane from the regime, we ain't take game, we just walked it out. Never run, let the bullets come, we gon' name names, shit, we call them out. Clever ones, governments try to meddle some. Wanna keep us down, but we are the sun. Beating to the ground, but we ain't never run, then the pedal sprung. From the dirt, show the shrug to a rosebud. From the hurricane, it's summer work, when you know love, you don't come to work. Let the streets flood like, like it's no boss. It came too soon. Love it. Love it. Love it. Women spoke in the cane reason in the true bloom when the mother so ideas. Yeah, it's really, really live here. Oh, but see, you try to buy fear. For me, your feeling will be cry tears. Guessing work and see the time near. Listen wow. now, throw the rope with when this is out. Stand up to him sitting down. No protection. Stand up to them sitting down. Wow. So they savagery, give the promises and they miss the vows. Images of a living crowd. Let me see you try to dismiss it. I don't know. Yeah. I like that he's there because if you don't know. Oh, Wow. Okay, listen. Thank you for tuning in. Allow okay. me to reintroduce again who this is. AKA I love him. the spirit that honest the blood of the martyrs, the soul of the Nubians. Nigga, this isn't a movie. You're looking at the last of him, the room listen. with the Whoa. humans. He goes the crazy. Listen. Listen. The proof in my suit in him. Go ahead and Google it. Dripping in the book. Family borderline broke, motherland boiling like milk. Uh. That mean that I know, that mean that, that mean that I am not nothing like you. Yeah, yeah, nigga, move that shit. I'm sticking true to my roots. Oh. You know that Yeah, she's amazing. I'm so good. I'm feeling low. We on a high note. Big brother, see the dough was puffing right up. Name a white man who wanna war without violence. I run with the wolves and I eat with the lions. When I take shots, you can listen for the silence. 
Damn. What do you think? Oh my god. It's been out by now. First reaction. <laughs> Produced by a guy called Brooklyn Hits. Wow, um, like my Sudanese. face is red. Like I feel like the blood is flowing to my cheeks. It, it, you know, like there is a lot of Sudanese, obviously, terminologies. What did, did you, did it connect with you? Yeah, of course. But the thing is, is that mm. I feel like it's universal. Like yeah. you connect to the feeling. You don't just connect to the yeah. words. Yeah. And I, it's, wow. I'm so uh, proud of you guys. Um, yeah. But now this wow, is, wow, wow, this, this wow. Is, this would have been out by now. Oh, oh, Shout okay. out to 80 Proof, though. Yeah. Like, for real, this 89. guy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. left his comfortable yeah. home in, in, in Queens, yeah. New York, yeah. to do this. To do that. And to promote the, the culture. Circle. Which brings me to the question, when you interview ba uh, Bass, yeah. how love, is that? Uh, firstly, that is incredible. I love Bass. Okay. Like, I've loved Bass as a musician. Yeah, our families were close historically. I'm Marshall my uncle okay, and okay, his okay. uncle, but it, yeah, I need okay. time and distance. And I'm really close to his older brother you, Moma and, you knew and Isra. Of him way before it. Or but, so I, me, I reconnected with them okay. as I got older, and I knew of his music before I reconnected with them. And I have to say, uh, he's so talented. But yeah. I love his music more after knowing him as well, Marshall. which I didn't think was possible. How was that interview that you did with him? That what interview was, that? was, you know, him and I were talking a lot for the months. Um, yeah, yani even you know what, even before the mm. revolution started. Yeah. Bass and I were talking about me covering his show in Sudan nice. and him talking about the struggles of his, you know, of, of the people. But also, you know, he's from Hadfaya Bahri and, and it's a place, it's like a middle class neighborhood. And he really wanted to, you know, amplify what was going on in Sudan before protests started, but bo and way before it was cool and trendy and, and trend, you know, wow. viral and trending. Wow. Wow. Big up um, to him. Big up to him for real. Big up to the whole family, yeah. you know, them, his mom and dad as well. Amazing wow. people. Wow. You, but, you, 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 you met them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I met them. But, um, you know, we sat down and, and, and he's so smart. Like, he's a really switched on guy. And he... <laughs> I love him. Yeah. And, and he was just like, one of the things that I asked him was, you know, do, do you not feel compelled to make yeah. music about about the revolution and his his answer was so honest it was like for me i need to like if he was like if i had been there during the protest and i was able to like feel that energy yeah. I, I i would go in the booth and i would know that i could speak on it he's like i don't want to speak on it just because I'm i, I have to yeah. or because i'm like and i respected that so much because the easiest thing he could do was just go spit bars about it but he knew it wouldn't be as powerful as those who were there, yeah. you know, yeah. those who were there. And he spoke about it in the ways that he could. He did his interview with me. He yeah. did in other interviews, yeah. Teen Vogue, he yeah. spoke about it. And I just respected his authenticity more than anything because he could have pandered mm. to, to people and been like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll make a song about Sudan and the protest. Yeah, true. But no. Just he, ride the wave. Yeah, he, he wanted to keep his artistry authentic. He's doing a show in December. In this Sudan? Month. Yeah, he's doing oh, a show. Mashallah, he okay. actually told me about it just before what? you picked me up. Oh my They're God. They're doing a show. They're sorting out the venue. <laughs> by the time this comes out, yeah, it might have already, already, already <laughs> have happened. Wow. But that's, 
that's a real artist you right. know that's, that's an so artist wild. who wants to be on the ground and connect with the people and 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 not just do it because he feels like it will get him views or likes or follows or or money and, yeah. and i i just you know i have a lot of respect for him is, is this uh, i mean excuse my ignorance is this the second time you come to dubai or you've been always here or this is a... this is the third time third that time ever the first the okay. first time i was 10 years old wow okay and then i just avoided it yeah I read, I read your Instagram. Yeah, I avoided it. I loved it. Last year I came because I was involved in the World Government Summit. I was yeah. part of the Arab Youth yeah. Pioneers. It was in Abu Dhabi, I believe. No, no, no. it was Hina. Hina, Hina in Dubai, yes. In Dubai. And it was interesting. It was nice. But it was like I was here for a summit. This time, though, <laughs> very different. Yeah. Very Why? Very. You, met, you, you met a lot of creatives. I, I met a lot of incredible creatives. I met a lot of people who made time, made space mm. for me. But nice. also, like, I just saw not only how they were with me, but how they were with each other. It's a very supportive community. And inspired I think, you. And it really inspired me because it's it's a young community, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's not It hasn't been around for a long time. Sorry. So what you're seeing is what creative communities should be everywhere. Like, very supportive, collaborative. Obviously, it has its flaws, I'm sure. Yeah. And I've just been here for for a week so it's it's a, it's not a, mm. a, 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 a all encompassing picture but i saw like one thing that i really liked is that they get paid here properly for for projects ah uh, yes yeah they get yeah. paid proper yeah. money creatives in london and new york they don't? They, they, they don't get paid properly for really? their projects no being a creative unless you are like super established and famous and have a mm -hmm. name you you struggle for so long to the point where so many people give up and I really wow. like that because right. yani, there's, there's, there's a market here for design and for artistry yeah. and for culture and stuff. They're, they're getting supported by you know yeah. companies here yeah. who, want their, who want their work. So you're seeing a lot of people who are underrated because it's an immigrant cl mm. creative community yani, at its core. And you're seeing a lot of mm. underrated creatives come here so, and, and, and feel valued. And that's you, what I love. Do you feel Dubai is a bubble though? I mean, I think it's a crazy city. Like, it's literally, I think that it's it's man-made in every aspect. So yeah. I think it, it's a bubble in the sense of, like, mm. if you're here for too long, I think it would be very easy to understand the struggle of people okay. around the world yeah. and understand that, like, life isn't like this. Like, no. amazing service all the time. <laughs> you know, yeah. everything is so convenient. Yes, yes. I, I can imagine living here, you'd become disconnected. This, yeah, that's Can I ask you a question? Yeah, do that. You know, I'm a journalist. I can't just be interviewed. <laughs> I, I, I was going to get away with it. Yeah, man. no. Um, <laughs> why does Sudan resonate with you? That's a very good question, fam. Um, the revolt cipher that I've done for Sudan, all these artists impacted me. Yeah. So all the artists that are on it impacted me. Now, this the question I think is to be very frank with you. I personally believe the reason why is because. I know a lot of friends, I have a lot of Sudanese friends. Mm -hmm. I know what their heart is, and mm -hmm. I don't like the projection of the media, how they've seen. Mm -hmm. For example, I'll be very honest with you. When I was growing up in Saudi, they've always shown the Sudan one, one type of Sudanese laziness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always been there. Of course, the running joke. Yeah, 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 it's always been there. Yeah. And of course, I grew up to, to learn that, no, Sudan, there's a lot of creatives, photographers, journalists, filmmakers. filmmakers. And I'm like, that's not right. You so never I saw felt, that side. I felt, yeah, I felt like, no, no, hey, you need to always represent. Yeah. like that and there's a lot of amazing incredible art coming out of there so yeah, yeah. Um, I think that is the main thing same thing subhanAllah with hip hop the reason why I launched the hip hop is because I felt that hip hop is one of the genres that's misrepresented yeah. it's only yeah. booty shaking and only blah yeah, blah it's not, not the that. consciousness yeah, of it you know? yeah. so I am very like vocal about you know that and it's my dream to go to Sudan so when we go to Sudan you gotta tell me to where to go Wali, bed, bed, you, know? Wallahi, you have to you know, come like, I know anytime it's one of my They dreams. love you there. A um, couple of questions for you before yes. we drop you now here. Um, in terms of, um, mashallah, I think the work that you have done, no one can, any, um, yeah, any in, in, incredible work that you've done, what is it that you want to do even more? Like, what is it that you're looking forward to do and to cover and, you know, to tell the world more about Sudan? Is it only going to be still Sudan? You focus about Sudan? I think that uh, I'm going to, you know, Sudan is my heart, mm. you know, and I'm always going to come back to that I'm, as much as I branch out. I think now for me, it's it's doing the journalism and the news, but also, you know, I, I went freelance to have the time and energy to do the creative cultural projects that I, I feel passionate about. So again, you know, mixing storytelling with yes. culture, yes. but also using different mediums, you know, not just news and documentary, but like, you know, going into you know directing things nice because i i want to like take a step back from being on camera to okay, be honest okay, okay, i just okay. want to go 
back into like producing and writing and, and, and hopefully directing. Wow. And looking at different mediums in, to impact people. Have you ever got scared? About, you were scared about what? About telling a story. You, you were like, mm. <laughs> you know that? Mm. You know what? <laughs> the great Yusra. <laughs> No, because I think to say that I'm not scared is, is to be arrogant, you know, I think... So you did? I, th I think that the day that we went into the protest, it wasn't, it wasn't fear, it was like adrenaline. So wow. it was like, I think more about, you know, the risk, mm. you know, what am I going to put my... F I think the, the fear that I felt, you know what, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that. The, the scared, the most scared I've been is when I was in in London yeah. and I was covering the massacre and my parents were in the house at Khartoum. Ya Allah. That was the most scared I've been. And I'll tell you a story, has no one really knows this, but my, my boss at Channel 4 News, she was like, are you sure your family are safe? Are you sure your parents are safe? And I called my dad. I was like, dad, should we, you have to tell me, can we keep, yeah, and he should be stopped. And he was like, no, he's like, you keep pushing, you keep pushing. What? He was following, obviously. Yeah, workshop. he was like, you keep pushing. No, he didn't have internet, yeah, but yeah, he yeah. knew. Yeah. He was like, you keep pushing. And I literally handed the phone to my boss and my dad was like, you can't stop. He was like, you have to keep Look going. Look again. You know what I mean? She gave me and, three, and, four times and goosebumps. That, and it was, that was the fear that I had. And I actually, when I put out an investigation, I oh, forced man. my parents to fly to Jeddah because uh, um, yeah. for their safety. Yeah. And I remember my mom was like, no, I want to be here. And I remember I said to her, I was like, mama, if God you don't bless. fly out, I'm flying in. And she was like, are you threatening me? Are you threatening me? I was like, no, I'm actually going to fly in. And then they left. Oh, wow. They, they, left, for, they left for two, three weeks. They waited for things to yeah, come yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah, and after the week of you, terror that they experienced. Yeah. And then they went back. What do you think of the term polytricks? What do you mean by polytricks? You know, like politics is polytricks. And in, in hip hop, that, that term really surfaces a lot. It's like, you know, games and all games, the, politics. The, 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 the people, the people, are, they go, the victim are the people and it's all a game. And what do you think of that as a journalist? I, I don't agree because mm. I think that that's being a, that's a generalization in itself. Mm. I think there can be politics for good, mm. but to be a politician, a politician who's earnest, mm. that's, that's the paradox. Like it's very difficult to be earnest and to be a politician, but I think it exists, but those people rarely win. Yeah. Mm. They that's rarely it. win because the system is stronger you're, than them. You're familiar, of course, with Khalid Al-Bay. Yeah, I really you, like Khalid. You, you met him? You, yeah, you we, met, okay. we met. Khalid actually well, What tweeted. do you think of his work? Because his work is very minimalistic, right? Like his drawing is yeah. so simple, but then BAM! No, Khalid, Khalid is, is an, like, he's so talented. Yeah. And what I like about Khalid is that he does his, his, his own stuff, his, his cartoons, yeah. but he also is really invested in promoting Sudan. So that, that book, yeah. that, that collection yes. they did, yes, Sudan yeah. Retold, everyone should buy it, it's mm. amazing. Um, bringing together artists to tell Sudan's story and it, through visuals, through through their art, through graphics, yani that that really embodies a real artist. It's not someone who just does the work, but yeah. also creates a community and a collective yeah. to to do the work together. What's your dream? My dream is for Sudan mm. and every country and people who've been you know trampled on yeah. for for so long to to rise up and to, to, to reclaim the narrative. Reclaim the narrative. Really and truly. I'm, I'm gonna call this episode. Reclaim the narrative. Yusra al reclaim the narrative. You know, that's the name of my album. <laughs> my rap album. Yeah. Um, listen, as we're approaching, I wanna, say, I wanna say thank you for being who you are. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you for being who you are. And protect you and, and your, your family. I wanna shout out them one by one. Your parents, this is a problem that we have in the region and in the Arab region especially, when parents see there is potential from kids, we dumb them down. I've mm -hmm. seen it in front of me, you know, mm -hmm. we dumb them down. They gave you power. Yeah. And they could have just simply said, no, sit. They you trained know? me especially as, well. as Especially even more so as an Arab female. Yeah. We have a problem and it's a, it's a really big deal. And um, I, I, I thank you for your time. Uh, I know I took you away from like wherever you are for like an hour. <laughs> But bless you, fam. Any last words you'd like to say? And please, your social media handle. We are here. So it's at Yusr al Baghir. Um, and I just want to thank everyone who has, you know, amplified the work that I did and shared it. And, 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 and you know. How can they not? 
you give us so much hope. No, and, and no, no. But, but you know what it is? There's so <laughs> many people who are who are yelling into into a dark room, and mm. I was just so lucky to have so such a supportive community mm. to amplify my work and to share it and to make sure that the effort that you yes. know me and my family were putting in didn't go to waste. Mm. And I just want to thank everybody, everybody who's reached out to me. You know, I don't look at my DMs too often, but <laughs> I appreciate all of you one by one. Wallahi, and I just, I just. We just need to stick together and stay positive mm. and, and nothing is impossible. Last thing, uh, tell us something not a lot of people know about you. Like something, what is it? Like, you know? That I can freestyle. Really? Yeah. I used to freestyle in school. Do, do, can you do something now? Um, it's not going to be good. I'm rusty. Let's go. I can beat box and freestyle. La. Wallah. Well, are well, you going to take another lap? I wait until the end. <laughs> I'm definitely okay. taking another lap. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> uh, what? You yeah, go. Why don't, why don't I be boxing? You freestyle. I, no way. That okay. doesn't work that way. I, okay, I can't, okay I can't. put an instrumental on. Instrumental. I don't know. I have uh, uh, some Manny beats. Okay, some Manny beats. Let's do it. I don't know which one. Which ones? Oh my God. I can't <laughs> believe it. Really? Yeah, yeah but I, I'm not good. But yeah, I can do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. okay. Um, Layla. I'm not sure if you know Layla. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Out in Dubai. Feeling super fly. We come through. No, it ain't a drive by. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. You like it, huh? You like freestyling. I used to do it in school and I actually like used to beat the boys in my class. I want to hear the beatboxing. Okay. <coughs> it's not good. Do it, do it. No, no, okay. But you know the trick, it's boots and cats. Yeah, boots and cats, huh? Yeah. <coughs> No, I, you know what I just imagined right now? I imagined um, AKA Keys, you know, too I, dope. Yeah. And, and you were in the middle, and you're in the middle boxing, like, and they're like, they're rapping, yeah. yeah. I'm also learning how to DJ. Marshall, this is the thing, music is my first DJ. love. You love music. Music is my first love. Man. And um, Who's just, your favorite journalist to follow? I mean, come on. <laughs> Do I have... That's a stupid question. It's Ni'mal Baghir for CNN, obviously. Yeah, but obviously, she's incredible. Um, but Lindsay Watch Hilsom, Lindsay Hilsom mm. for Channel 4 News, mm, mm. she was one of the first women on the f- doing war, yeah, war yeah. journalism. Um, you, you, just a funny story. So I'm, I'm, I'm researching you a little bit and obviously Ni'mal come through. Yeah. My wife is why she's like, is that... Is that Nam? Like, what, I'm like, yeah, there's like, what? You're meeting the sister of... <laughs> yeah. Na- I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. You don't, you don't understand. I, what, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that, that was us. And you know she, that not a lot of people know that she broke the Libya slave auction yeah, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not a lot yeah. of people know. That was, that was the story, yeah. And her story was incredible. I mean, she was on Trevor Noah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was know, with her. I was in the green room. No way. Yeah, I was in the, he was so nice. He's such good a Good nice. green room snacks. Yeah. Okay, Yeah, nice. great snacks. <laughs> oh, man. Bless you, fam. I wish you all the best. Yeah, uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our heroes right here. I'm so honored to have her on Buckle Up. Follow this incredible, you know, um, sister, and may Allah bless you always, fam. Thank you and, so um, much, Has. Like Thank you for what you do guys. for the culture. Thank you. Bless you. It's, it's a wajib. Wajib. So, yeah. Kullu wajib. Yeah, see? Yeah. Uh, we come from the same thing. Uh, peace and love, guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, Millie Rock. <laughs>